Have you seen gas prices lately? Kind of out of control, aren't they? Yeah. And you know who to blame? That's right. I agree. No one. You can't blame one person because no one person has that kind of control when things are out of control. Sometimes in life, things are out of control. Many times, there's so many things beyond our control. And so we need to find a way. And what is that way? Well, let's explore it today. Maybe together we will find a marginal way. to walk in the way of Jesus. We are an open and affirming church, faithfully using who we are and what we have to serve those on the margins of our community. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We continue our movement through the Lent season this week with another kind of letting go. This week we lament that so much in our life is out of control. This is frustrating to us, and so sometimes we have been tempted to believe the sayings that tell us that if we just think positively, we can turn it all around. Yet our experience tells us that this doesn't always work. Let us turn ladder climbing toward the expectation of a perfect life into garden tending, nurturing what is, and embracing our holy, good enough lives. disappoints us and yet God is still here and somehow this faith is good enough what in our lives do we dream about for tomorrow void of sorrow time spent regretting decisions of our yesterdays mistakes we made sometimes we get what we get life disappoints us and yet God is still here and somehow this faith is good enough Let us pray together. Holy One, our light and salvation, we call out to you, sometimes afraid of the adversaries in life. Shelter us in days of trouble. Lead us on level paths. Open us this day to your grace and peace. Transform our frustrations into simple and good enough moments that fill our days. Amen. Let's see what 
this week's lesson is going to be about. So where's our secret? Oh, here's our message from Reverend Ian. Let's see what it says this week. It says, you can do it. <laughs> well, I know we can. <laughs> hmm, that's an interesting message. You can do it. Well, we can do it, can't we? We can figure out what the message is. Let me tell you, I have been so excited for this week. This week, I wanted to talk about these plants and how we could, oh, oh, yipes. Oh no, oh, it's raining. Oh man, this ruins everything. I was gonna show you the plants and we were gonna have a good time and I was gonna show you how the plants grow and everything's, what, what? I can't, what do you, what do you tell? Oh, the, oh, oh, the umbrella. I, okay, let me, let me see if I can. Oh, it's raining on me, it's ruined everything. I hate when my plants are wrecked and I can't do what I wanted to. Oh, you, this is much better. You're right. I just needed to breathe and calm down and think of a solution. Huh. Thank you all for helping me think of this solution. So now I can still show you the plant that's blooming. There. Well, not blooming yet. The bulbs are starting to grow and hopefully those flowers will bloom soon. <sighs> I think. I might be understanding the lesson. So the letter said, you can do it. I can do it if I slow down and calm down and think of a solution. God has given us an amazing ability to be creative thinkers and problem solvers and to be people that can adapt. We just need to remember that we can adapt to situations and figure out solutions. Whew, I got it. Thanks everybody for helping me. Okay, let's close with our, oh, I guess it's not raining anymore. I can put my umbrella away. Let's close with our poem. Here it goes, ready? Follow me. I look at you, I look at me, I celebrate, what I see, cause God made all, the smooth and rough, no matter what, you're good enough. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Awesome. All right, I will see you all next week. You're perfect in the perfect way. You're perfect and I hope you stay. Your goofy little self for me. Just then, some Pharisees came to Jesus and said, You need to get out of town and fast. Herod is trying to kill you. Jesus replied, Go tell that fox, today and tomorrow I'll be casting out devils and healing people, and on the third day I'll reach my goal. Even with all that, I'll need to continue on my journey today, tomorrow, and the day after that, since no prophet can be allowed to die anywhere except in Jerusalem. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you kill the prophets and stone those who are sent to you. How often have I wanted to gather your children together as a mother bird collects her babies under her wings, yet you refuse me. So take note, your house will be left to you desolate. I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God.
27 years I've been showing up at this location hoping to make a difference. I'm just a fan. I, I, I lose my voice cheering for the team and does it matter? Well, I hope that it does, but you know, this team has broken my heart more than it's given me pleasure. But I don't quit. I love the New England Revolution. There's absolutely no reason to other than they're my team. Tonight, they brought me great joy. This is one of the best games I've seen in a long time. But there are times, oh, so many times, when it hasn't seemed to matter that I care, but I keep caring. And that is really part of the message that we read in this scripture this week. Jesus cared so much about Jerusalem, a place that killed prophets, a place that was going to kill him. But he loved them and wanted to bring them under his wing to show them the love that he truly felt for them. Does it matter? Yeah, it always matters. Love always matters. Love always wins. Do you have power to change things? Perhaps not, but you have a choice to not let those things that are beyond your control, control you. You have a choice to love, to always love, to always try to make a difference. That's what Jesus did. And that's what Jesus calls us to do. Well, there is so much that's out of our control. And we'd like to find some control. And when we don't have control, we kind of think that maybe God does. And then we might complain that God isn't in control. And it makes our heads hurt and makes us feel guilty because maybe we shouldn't have those thoughts. But that's the life we live with, isn't it? In one of Kate... Podca Kate Bowler's podcast, where she interviews Emily McDonald, she talks about greeting cards. Emily McDowell has created a whole series of cards that are appropriate for when people are suffering, because so many of them aren't, right? She points out that uh, it's strange when you're sick to get a get well soon card when you don't actually know if you're going to get well. And so she's created these wonderful cards that are a little bit more honest about control and suffering and what we deal with in the world. One of my favorites is she has a card that says, let me be the person to smack the next person who says to you, everything happens for a reason. Yeah, exactly. The things that we say that we think are going to fix people that somehow are comforting that really are not. Because it really just betrays our need for control and for change and for fixing things that sometimes can't be fixed. There is so much out of control, out of our control. You know, we're in this season of Lent when we're thinking about Christ's suffering at the end and his death and resurrection. And because we know how the story ends, we don't have quite those feelings about resurrection that maybe we would if we were a little more honest. Think about the stories, the miracle stories of Jesus' healing and how he brought some people back from the dead. Well, he wouldn't have to if the person didn't die in the first place, right? And we hear that in the stories, too. When he goes to see Lazarus, his siblings say to Jesus, if only you'd been here. And Jesus weeps and brings him back to life. But if we're honest about resurrection, we wouldn't want it to ever happen. We want everything to live forever and to be whole and happy and healthy, but that's not the world we live in, is it? And we hold on to things perhaps sometimes that need to die because we don't believe in resurrection. We don't 
truly believe that the one prerequisite for resurrection is death. There is so much that is out of control. But we may not be able to control it, but we can choose to not let it control us. We can choose how we respond to the things that are beyond our control. That is within the scope of what we can choose. It is okay to feel what you feel without justification. You feel hurt because it's painful. You feel sad because it is tragic. You feel angry because it is unfair. Remember that you are not the feeling, that you feel it. It simply happens. Think about the cloud in the sky as the feeling. You are not the cloud. You are the sky in which these things occur. If only we had that attitude about our lives and the world. But when we're truly honest, the world is not really a very good character witness for God, is it? Certainly not if we think of a loving, fair God who makes everything happen beautifully when we experience difficulties in this world, things beyond our control. It's not necessarily an argument for God, is it? So what do we do? How do we respond to this God? How do we speak to this God in our prayers? Well, again, I'm afraid that too often in our prayers, we're transactional. Prayer works when we get the response we're asking for, right? We tell people, let's pray about it. And then when the miracle happens, when the healing comes, when the good thing happens, oh, see, prayer works. Is prayer really that kind of transaction? And if it doesn't work, why doesn't it work? We tend to take the blame on ourselves because it would be a very perverse God who will not hear our prayers or might reject our pleas because we don't do it right. So even there, when we think it's our fault, why would God do that? So what is this about? Why should we pray? Is it a formula to get what we want, to make things work, something we must do correctly? There is so much that is out of control. We cannot control many things, but we can control how we feel and not let them control us. So perhaps in our prayers, the thing that changes is not God or God's will or the circumstance. Maybe it doesn't always bring a miracle. Maybe prayer is about having that conversation with God so that the change happens in us. That we learn to choose to accept the things that we cannot control. And that we can seek the wisdom and strength to determine what we can and what is within our control and what we can change and the strength to do that work. Maybe that's the real work of prayer. This was true even for Jesus. Jesus could calm the storm, did calm the storm. Jesus could heal people, did heal people. Jesus could raise people from the dead and did. But he didn't calm every storm. And he didn't heal every person. And he didn't feed every person. And he didn't raise every dead person from the grave. I don't know why there were limits. I don't know if he was unable or unwilling. I know that as a human, he probably felt like we feel that let's fix it all. But the divinity in him assured him that there is a plan and there is a hand behind all of this and that everything may not happen for a reason, but everything happens. And that we don't go it alone. That whatever happens, we're not alone. And that's a lesson that was hard for Jesus to live. Because 
He knew what was happening around him. He knew what was going to happen to him. He understood how people are. And the one thing that God does not seem to be able to do, the one thing that Jesus surely was not able to do, is to control how other people think and act and feel. For whatever reason, we have that freedom. That's part of God's plan. And so the people around Jesus were like those baby chicks who run around the barnyard, who maybe are attracted by the grain when you throw it out. Maybe that's the way to go, isn't it? The way to herd cats is to wield a can opener, right? Give people something to come to, attract them. And Jesus was doing that, and yet those baby birds did not want to come under his wing. They still resisted. Foolish little birds. Just the way we are, right? We don't want to be comforted sometimes. We don't want to believe that in this harsh word world that there is comfort. We want the miracle. We want things fixed. We want the transaction. When we don't get it, we blame the messenger. And that's why Jesus suffered and died. I don't contend that it was God's plan from the start that Jesus had to die to satisfy some formulaic anger, the wrath of God. I think it's perfectly natural to understand that Jesus came and even proclaiming good news, release of the captive, sight to the blind, good news for the poor, all of us poor souls receiving the good news, even that we refuse to be comforted under the wing of God and we killed God's beloved child. The good news there, the very good news there is that even that, even that act was not able to separate us from the love of God. That's what our salvation is about. That we are the inheritors of that glorious love of God. There is so much that is out of control. We cannot control many things, but we can choose not to be controlled by them. Maybe what we do doesn't create change in some transactional, controlling manner. But doesn't every act of caring, every act of support matter? Doesn't love matter? Of course it does. It matters in creating healthy relationships. The kind of relationships that bring about the healing that matters. The healing of our beings, if not our bodies. And it does change things. First of all, it changes our attitudes. It makes way for hope. It makes way for comfort. Even in the midst of the storm. Jesus, the one who can calm the storm, is in the boat with us. He may be asleep, but he's in the boat. It may not be time for him to wake and calm the storm, and we may need to just trust that even if the ship goes down, we are in God's care, and we are in the presence of Christ. And friends, that is good enough. Amen. Blessed are you who see things clearly, where struggle is everyone's normal. You walk among the fellowship of the afflicted, a club no one wants to join. And while thy, this life isn't shiny, it does come with superpowers, superpowers of ever-widening empathy and existential courage that gets you back up after another fall and a deepened awe at the beauty and love that can be found amid life's rubble. Like flowers that grow from the cracks in the sidewalk, these virtues blossom in you, and thank God for you. Blessed are all of us who struggle, for we are in good company, and will never walk alone.
And now may the God who loves all of creation, especially the imperfect bits, and Jesus, our companion along the crooked path called life, and the Holy Spirit, who loves to improvise in surprising ways, go with you, dwell among you, and give you joy. Amen. You don't ask us to get on our hands and knees. You don't ask us to crawl in the dust. You don't ask us to say the right words, cross our T's. You don't ask us to believe. All you ask, all you ask, all you ask us is to be loved, love. To be love, love. You don't ask us to do it all perfectly. You don't ask us if we're enough. You don't ask us to all be alike or agree you don't ask us to believe all you ask all you ask all you ask us is to be love love to be love Love. Let us be here in your love, always only be your love. Be your hands and arms of love, be your voice and heart of love. Let us be here in your love, always only be your love. Be your hands and arms of love. Be your voice and heart of love. Let us be your love. You don't ask us to believe. All you ask, all you ask, all you ask us is to be love, love. Love, love.